In this tutorial, we are going to learn about the role and activities of a tester in any of the Agile development project. So if you're working in any of the Agile development methodologies like Scrum, Kanban or Extreme Programming, you need to have these um, uh, skill set, the skill set that we will be discussing in this tutorial and perform the roles and activities that are discussed in this tutorial. So there might be more uh, activities or more set of responsibilities, but uh, this tutorial will have mostly all of the common roles and responsibilities that an agile tester needs to have to work in any of the agile development methodology. So for this tutorial, I'm going to take an example of the Scrum development methodology and see what are the activities or roles or key skills that are required by a tester in any of the agile development project. So let's see what those roles and activities are. So the first thing is the teamwork. Teamwork is the fundamental principle of agile development and Agile emphasizes the whole team approach, which means that um, the developers, testers, and business representatives, they all work together, and it doesn't matter what the composition of the team is, everyone in the team is responsible for the quality and delivery of the project. Now, from the tester's perspective, um, successful Scrum projects um, will require the teams to have uh, to be, you know, like the cross-functional uh, teams to be empowered, co-located, collaborative, committed, transparent, credible, open to feedback, and resilient. So let's um, understand a brief about all of these terms first. So cross-functional, as we have discussed in the previous tutorials as well, the team in Agile should be cross-functional, which means there should be people or the composition of the team should be that people from different skill uh, come together to solve a problem or to solve uh, a problem and deliver the actual uh, product or the solution to the customer or the end user. The second thing is the uh, team should be empowered. There shouldn't be any micromanagement. The team should be self-organized and should be delivering what they commit in the timely fashion and there shouldn't be any micromanagement within the team because Agile is more about the self-organized and self-managing team. So the team should be empowered to make their own decision and deliver what they commit in the sprint and within the um, uh, within the sprint and the release. Co-location is the another important aspect. So the team should be co-located to have better collaboration and communication within each member of the team. And as a tester, because you will be communicating a lot with the developer and business stakeholders to clarify the doubts uh, and queries. So co-location is another important uh, aspect of the agile development approach. The next thing is collaborative. The team or the tester should be having a lot of collaboration with other team members which involves having a uh, communication with the peer tester or developer or the business stakeholder to clarify any of the gaps or um, to ensure that whatever you are doing in the team or the work that you are doing is transparent and visible to others and everyone has confidence of the quality that you all will be delivering uh, by the end of the iteration by end of the release the team should be committed or you should if you're working as a tester you should be committed or everyone in the team should be committed to the del delivery and you should be delivering uh, whatever is committed within the specified timeline there should be transparency and that's where the physical uh, boards come in picture like scrum board wherein you have all the tasks visible who is working on, uh, on what in that particular sprint and that's pretty much visible on the physical board as well as on the um, software board which which could be a jira board uh, jira scrum board that you define and everyone will be able to see what activities the other team members are working and there will be a lot of transparency uh, across the team uh, to see how the team is progressing in that particular iteration uh, and the overall release uh, the team should be credible that uh, if you're working as a tester or developer in the team you should be credible enough to 
deliver what you have committed uh, within the specified timeline you should be open to feedback so if there is uh, any feedback provided to you you should be open to it in a positive manner and incorporate um, the feedback in a positive way and deliver uh, or improve based on that particular feedback in upcoming iteration um, you should be resilient to the changes so if there are any um, changes within the uh, within the next iteration based on the feedback from the stakeholders etc so uh, you should be resilient enough to uh, commence with the new changes or um, come up with the new tools and techniques in the upcoming iterations so these are some of the key aspects of um, a tester or any member in an agile software development uh, project now the next thing is around um, the role or activities that you will be doing as a tester in sprint zero so sprint zero of any of the agile project or uh, scrum uh, is a, the sprint wherein you do all of the preparation work or define all of the um, initial stuff that you need before you actually start working on the product development now in sprint zero as the tester you will be identifying the overall project scope you will be specifying the definition of done you will be helping uh, with your insights as a tester in the definition in defining the definition of done for the sprint for the for your particular iteration for the release etc so you'll be providing a lot of info inputs uh, from the testing perspective to define that definition of done you will be creating the task board and the project dashboard dashboard so you could also be involved in creating the dashboard or project dashboard as well so uh, many places i have seen that if you're working as a um, as a tester uh, it it's mostly um, helpful to provide your own insight to help in creating the dashboard or if you have skill set of managing the um, jira software or any of the uh, agile development softwares then you can also um, define the dashboard and project dashboard and provide your insights to have the right set of statistics displayed on the dashboard and dashboard then you will be also identifying procedure and setup um, tools for the test management defect management and automation and the other testing activities so that's also part of the sprint zero activity that you'll be identifying what process you'll be following what tools you'll be using for the defect management for the test management and and for the automation in your um, sprint they will be defining test metrics as well you will be defining the criteria to start and exit testing which is basically nothing but the definition of done so you'll be defining the definition of done for uh, entering the sprint or um, exiting the sprint uh, and then exiting the um, or basically completing or saying the story has been done so there will be a lot of uh, criteria defined for uh, at the story level at the iteration level and that will um, be defined in the sprint zero then you will you will also undertake quality risk and anal analysis in the sprint zero so these are some of the activities that you will be performing as a tester in sprint zero there could be more activities depending on what your project requirements are and how big the project is there could be more or less activities in the sprint zero for a tester um, the next thing is the integration so when you start working in the agile development environment there is no um, uh, phased approach so the it's basically iteration by iteration or sprint by sprint uh, development and the product is built incrementally so there is a basic level of um, uh, development that starts and then in the next iteration next sprint there is an incremental build that happens on top of what has been built in the previous sprint now because of this incremental approach there is an integration requirement or uh, there is a lot of integration that happens in e that uh, happens in each and every upcoming sprints now as a tester you need to have um, uh, you need to define the integration strategy in order to identify that what all uh, what all dependencies are there so 
as a tester you will analyze the whole architecture and see how the development is happening what components have been built and what is still missing so that integration strategy has to be defined by you so that will give you a clear picture of what the end result should be and how the delivery is happening what components have been built and what needs to be built further to enable the overall uh, product delivery and this integration strategy helps in continuous testing and delivery of the customer value because of this integration strategy that you define um, that in sprint one these are the components that will be delivered and in, uh, in sprint two there will be more components built on top of these uh, existing components that were built in the previous sprint and how those integration points will um, will be made between the work that is done in sprint one and sprint two all these things need to define need to be defined in the integration strategy and as a tester uh, you will be the best person to define this strategy uh, because this will help you to ensure that you are doing the right level of integration testing in particular sprint and in the upcoming sprint when the product development or uh, the new iteration keep building incremental product and because of this integration strategy there is a lot of uh, demand for the automation uh, activities so any of the uh, any work that you will be doing in the current sprint need to be automated so that in next sprint when there is new integration coming in picture the existing integration that has been done if that can be tested mostly by the automation that will reduce a lot of amount of work uh, in the upcoming sprint so that's where as a tester you need to provide a lot of insights around the integration strategy now the next big thing that you need to do as a tester is the test planning which is um, the default activity if you're working in any of the project as a tester you need to define what the scope is what is the extent of testing that is required for the story within the sprint to complete the iteration and what are the goals that you want to achieve then you need to define what test environment details what test data requirement is and what tools are required for you to perform that the, the testing for the whole project and deliver it deliver it successfully uh, and with quality then you will be defining what test date and uh, what the start and end date is uh, which is basically nothing so all these activities are the whole uh, planning activity so you'll be defining the start and end date you will be defining what test methods what techniques and tools you will be using to test that whole project uh, product within the iteration and across the life cycle then you'll be defining any risks and dependencies uh, if there are any that will be defined in the plan as well there will be uh, product and project risks that will be defined and then you will be defining any mitigation plan for those risks there will be the risk will be prioritized and based on the priority of the risks you will be um, deciding which test cases need to be uh, executed in what priority order to mitigate those risks so test planning is another major activity that you need to perform as a tester in any of the agile project the next thing is uh, there are some practices that you need to follow as an agile tester so agile tester role um, includes utilizing various agile practices which is like pair programming incremental test design mind mapping and um, uh, etc so pairing basically comes from the extreme programming and can be used in any of the agile development activities so in scrum as well pairing is very helpful and if you work with your peer testers with the developers and with business stakeholders on a regular basis and uh, you communicate and collaborate with them it resolves a lot of the quality issues up front before it actually goes into the code and you, it comes as a defect in the actual testing so that's where pairing is very important testers sit together with other team members on one workstation and performs the task so as a tester you can sit with the developer um, to guide him what unit test he need to include 
or if there is any gap in the unit testing that he is doing also you can test with the PA tester to automate the test cases in this particular sprint then uh, you can uh, sit with developer to review your automated automation script scripts uh, you can also sit with the testers to cross skill uh, so for example one tester is working on module a and you are working on module b you both can sit together to cross skill different modules and have everyone in the team on the same page the next activity or um, uh, practice that uh, you need to uh, implement is the incremental test design so as in agile development methodology there is an incremental um, product development uh, happening in each sprint so in sprint one will have a little amount of work that will be done and then sprint two will be building incremental on top of it so similarly the testing team or as a tester you should be building your test cases incrementally so test cases uh, will be built gradually from the user stories and tester should start from the simple test cases and then move towards the complex test design an incremental test design could be top up um, top down or bottom up so for example uh, you can start from the uh, from the top level model and then uh, have the stubs below it and could start with the uh, with the test cases in the top down approach or in the bottom up approach you can have the development happening from the bottom level uh, modules and then integration happening uh, until the top so these are the two uh, approaches that you could take uh, as a as a uh, as a test designer uh, usually these approaches are followed by the development team and based on what they are following you can follow your test design approach accordingly to have the test case uh, or test suite built incrementally in the upcoming iterations and the last thing is the mind mapping mind mapping so mind map is the graphical representation of idea or concept so testers as a tester in an agile project you should utilize mind mapping technique to record a uh, mind mapping tool to record any of the discussion and because it represents the idea or concept graphically it becomes really easy to visualize when you have this um, graphical representation of idea in front of you it, it helps you to analyze the requirement uh, it helps you to come up with the better test design and test planning and measure the test coverage based on that uh, rep graphical representation and this mind mapping helps in better test planning and also traceability and monitoring the overall test progress so mind mapping is also very important um, aspect within the agile uh, project so these are uh, these were some of the key roles and activities that you need as a tester in any of the agile development project thank you